what's going on guys snake eyes here playing some ground zeros now I'm gonna do something a little bit different um, to be honest this is like the third or fourth time that I've done this commentary mainly because there's so much that I want to say that I really don't know how to say it if uh, that makes sense uh, basically what you're seeing me doing right now is I'm training for MGO3 now if you don't know what that is um, it's the online version that um, Metal Gear Solid had and if you don't know what it is and you never heard of it uh, don't be surprised it was actually a really small community uh, was, I think in its prime had about 1500 people um, all in all like I said not really that big but for the people that knew about it and played it um, it was something that was probably the best experience that any one of us had uh, myself included the reason why um, I'm bringing this up is because this is actually a game that was really important to me um, it had a huge influence on the way that I look at games it had a really big influence on the type of games that I ended up liking uh, which actually that comes into uh, play when I'm talking about the Souls games this game I played before the Souls games and this game made me love them the reason that they made me love them is because MGO uh, MGO2 is uh, what it's officially named, uh, Metal Gear Online 2, because it's the second uh, version that came out. The first one came out in PS2, but the one that I'm talking about is the one for PS3. MGO2 had a mechanic, uh, or just its entire being, was so unique, uh, I never ran into it uh, ever, ever at all, period. Uh, I can't even fucking, I can't even talk right now. Um, it's just something that was really unique and the core thing that MGO2 had um, attracted me big time to the Souls games. Uh, I guess more specifically MGO2 made me want to be a better player um, period and it also taught me how to really just smarten up and think of things and you know I guess predict things and just all in all made me just a better player. Uh, obviously Souls games do that very same thing the thing that makes these two games really great is that if you actually put forth the effort you can be a better player the thing that made this game so addicting though was its mechanics now this game um, it had 22 levels you can only be level 22 and when you compare it to games like Call of Duty uh, Medal of Honor Battlefield any shooter really 22 doesn't sound like a whole lot the thing with this though is it was really hard to get level 22 um, at from you know it's uh, from the day that it was made to the day that they shut it down nobody outside of Japan legitimately got level 22 and what I mean by legitimately is um, I'll talk about that in just a second but it had 22 levels it had a great point system uh, GP for short and um, it also had emblems that like if you got like a headshot like if you were just really good at getting headshots you would get an emblem of the eagle which was uh, I think like uh, like good accuracy or something like that if you were good all around just like straight up all the game modes killing uh, kill death and all that you would get uh, what I'm pretty sure some of you guys are familiar with uh, the rankings in this game uh, foxhound fox hound and doberman uh, not in that order. I think the order is Hound, Doberman, Fox, and Foxhound. Um, and Boss and Big Boss, depending if you had a female or a male character. That's besides the point. But it had those three types of things that kind of, I guess, gave you a placement in the online uh, rankings. And all of those could be gained and they can be lost. Now, with that thing alone, if you were really into MGO, then that was probably the most addicting thing ever because it taught you to not only be better but it actually made you want to be better because if you started doing bad you ran the risk of losing everything and um, it was actually very possible to lose your levels your grade points your emblems and all in all just pretty much everything you worked for Obviously, if you work for something, you don't want to lose it. So what do you do? You keep working at it. That was the most addicting thing that MGO2 had. And that's why I really loved it. At the same time, though, 
it was not a game that forgave you if you decided to take a break from it. Uh, I remember the game only lasted four years. The reason it only lasted four years was because there was actually a lot of glitches and hackers towards the end of its life cycle. But the main reason why they ended up uh, closing down the servers was because there wasn't a lot of people. Um, in its prime, North America had about 1,500 people. Uh, Europe wasn't doing that great neither, and Japan probably had its highest, but I don't know the number of um, players that Japan had. But um, for North America and European uh, servers, it wasn't that much. But um, this game didn't forgive you if you decided to take a break. I played it solely for two and a half years, um, and I think I stopped playing it for about three months after that. And when I came back to it, everything about you know everything that I learned about that game was just completely off um, not only did I get worse but people got better uh, that was probably the main reason why people didn't really like playing that game is because if you got into it just a little bit late people built a certain uh, skill level um, that I guess turned off a lot of newcomers and that's what it really was that's kind of what it all boiled down to but if you got into it uh, when the game came out and you just started playing and working at it, you will notice a gradual increase in the average skill level. Um, I remember when I started playing it, the average level of just like people was around, I think like around 10. If you were level 10, you were pretty good. Um, fast forward it two and a half years, people's average levels were 18 and 19. Like I said, nobody ever got into 20 and 22 legitimately, uh, cause you know, the ranking system was a lot was pretty crazy i won't get into it too much because it's really something that you would have to get into to um i guess fully understand it but um i guess the short version of it is if you do good you gain something if you do decent uh, more often than not you might not gain anything uh you might gain a little bit or you might lose a little bit and if you do bad obviously you lose a little bit but then it kind of goes into you know if you do good against you know really good people who have higher ranking than you then your stats get boosted you know way up there uh, same thing on the opposite side if you do bad against people that are ranked lower than you then you get uh, increase in negative uh, so on and so forth and um, all in all really unique and I really loved it another thing that ended up uh, making me really addicted to this game was the simple fact that it had everything the single player game had and it pretty much just dumped that and made it so that way you can use it against real life people online. Now that was kind of one thing that was a little downside when I started playing this one. Um, I noticed that the CQC system in this game isn't as detailed as it was in 4. Um, with Metal Gear Solid 4 you can literally grab a hold of people and do what you want and depending on the way that you grab them, the way that you decide to let them go, um, really determined how you killed them. And if you were good at it, then you became really efficient at doing that. Um, that was something that, as I was playing the single player, uh, I noticed that it wasn't really as detailed as it was in 4, which was kind of a, you know, something that I got upset. Um, it was really something, like I said, this game, uh, MGL2, really kind of made any kind of player as long as they were good able to hold their own so you didn't have to be the best shot you didn't have to be the best cqc person uh, you didn't have to be the best sniper or the person with the riot shield as long as you were good at something chances are you can still hold your own online and that's kind of something that um, a lot of these games don't really have if you're not good at shooting Chances are you're not going to do good at all because there's going to be somebody better at shooting. And if you think about it, all shooters, that's all they really have. Which, um, I mean, I guess they're called shooters, but at the same time, this one just had a little bit more depth and detail than uh, just an average game. That was something that I kind of got a little upset about, but uh, all in all, I hope they change it and uh, just, you know, redo it just a little bit. But if they don't, then it's really no big deal. What you're seeing me do right now, and it might look a little weird for people who really haven't seen this type of play before, is I'm trying to get my shot right. Um, one of the other core things that the game taught me was to keep my eye focused on the center of the screen. 
Now, you can also see me switch back and forth between, uh, you know, over the shoulder on the right side or on the left side. Um, I prefer being over the shoulder on the left side just because it's easier for me to be like that. I ended up training myself to look over the shoulder on the left. Uh, a lot of people did the right, but uh, like I said, it was it was different, and if you were good, it really didn't matter. And like I said, it may seem a little confusing to you guys because it might just look like I'm just doing a couple shots, running, taking a, um, you know, a couple more shots, and that's pretty much what I'm doing. But uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm getting myself trained to refocus my eyes towards the center of the screen and uh, using my peripherals to pick up any movement and... Um, you know adjust my character to move towards the center of the screen uh, like I said it's something that you really would have to just practice a little bit and uh, check out but the reason I'm making this video is because I kinda wanna show you guys something that is uh, that was really close to me when uh, when I was younger um, this was a game that was actually really important and played a huge role in how I decided to take games um, and like I said, being that you guys are really cool, you guys are genuinely interested in the stuff that I like, and um, you know I listen and I talk with you guys, I figure you guys might like this too. Uh, it is different. It is a shooter. I know you guys really like Dark Souls 2 and just Souls games in general. And while I still will do Souls games and Bloodborne and all that stuff, I just want to let you guys know and kind of also let you guys in on something that I also kind of hold really important to me. Um, and showing you this game if you guys want to try it out I definitely recommend trying it out if you guys want me to talk a little bit more about MGO and all that stuff I could pretty much ramble on for days about that game the reason I'm just the reason I'm choosing not to is pretty much just because I don't want this video to go on for you know 20 30 minutes um, so I'm probably gonna cut it right here like I said if you want to hear a little bit more I still have more footage if you guys want to see it um, but other than that, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, take care.